might be some pressure on you here, Edwin, if they keep doing that every week because my wife's going to be saying, when's he going to get it on there? When's he going to get it on there? Because she's going to start missing them. Amen. Oh. <laughs> See, this may not just be this Sunday. It just depends on what God does. Amen. Amen. Got to be obedient to Him. Do what He tells you. Glory. You know, uh, a lot of the, a lot of the times, our physical being, our physical walk, the things that we do on a daily basis. I don't care if it's riding the bike or studying something or watching something. A lot of times, uh, if you're sensitive to the spirit, God shows you a spiritual parallel. And you guys have seen that. I've showed you Legos up here. I've showed you, uh, what was it, uh, My Little Pony. You know, I had some, and there was something that God had showed me during the time. Some great, some great stuff, you know. And um, somebody talked to me this morning about hiking with Jesus. And, you know, I'd been hiking and God had me find that. And uh, today, the title of the message is Bodybuilding. <laughs> <laughs> bodybuilding and uh it's un it's amazing how if you came well you're going to say man this is this is going to hit me both ways this is a double hit because i'm going to be beating on you for not being at the gym and beating on you for not being at the spiritual gym at the same time so you'd be like man some of you some of you only going to get hit one way but a lot of us going to get hit both ways you know i say man this hurts but uh bodybuilding real bodybuilding is building up the body of christ amen and so those two, those two together, bodybuilding in the physical sense, which, you know, uh, started doing a little bit of, and, and then building up the body of Christ. And if you turn your Bibles to um, Ephesians, we're going to read 16 verses. And it's long, so powerful, but it talks bu about this here, building up the body of Christ. And uh, the opening statement in chapter 4. I urge you then, I who am a prisoner because I serve the Lord, live a life that measures up to the standard God called you. Man. J just, just that first verse, man. I mean, it, live a life that measures up to the standard God set when He called you. Verse 2, be always humble, gentle, and patient. Show your love by being tolerant with one another. So not getting along with each other has been as going on from the beginning of time. Verse 3, do your best to preserve the unity with which the Spirit gives by means of the peace that binds you together. Peace within the body of Christ. There is one body and one Spirit just as there is one hope to which God has called you. There is one Lord, one faith, one baptism. There is one God and Father of all people who is Lord of all, works through all, and is in all. Each one of us has received a special gift in the proportion to what Christ has given. As the scripture says, when, we, when he went up to the very heights, he took many captives with him. He gave gifts to people. Now what does he went up mean? It means that first he came down to the lowest depths of the earth. So the one who came down is the same one who went up above and beyond the heavens to fill the whole universe with his presence. It was he who gave gifts to people. He appointed some to be apostles, others to be prophets, others to be evangelists, and others to be pastors and teachers. And he did this to prepare all not some, all of God's people for the work of Christian service. All of us. In order to what? To build up the body of Christ. Amen. And so we shall all come together to that oneness in our faith and in our knowledge of the Son of God. We shall become mature people reaching to the very height of Christ's full stature. Then we shall no longer be children carried by the waves and blown about by every shifting wind of the teaching of deceitful people who lead others into error by the tricks they invent. 
Instead, by speaking the truth in a spirit of love, we must grow up in every way to Christ, who is the head. Under his control, all the different parts of the body, all the different parts of the body fit together. And the whole body is held together by every joint with which it is provided. So when each separate part works as it should, when each separate part works as it should, the whole body grows and builds itself up through love. Amen. May the Lord bless the reading of the scripture and us already that came expecting be touched by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The whole body. Got to get a complete workout when you're bodybuilding. Amen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I try to uh, go to the gym three to four times a week. Once in a while, I'll even run on that treadmill. I hate that thing. I feel like a... I'd rather go down to the park. And Tammy's went down there before and she'll walk the track while I run three miles. And uh, her and Ethan will... You know, he'll, you, anyway. Once in a while, uh, I'll play with some weights. <laughs> Amen. Really get into that. It's something I look forward to. Once I... Get myself up and get there. Now, it's not easy. That first part, that is the, that's the hardest part because that bed feels so good. So I have no one. Nah, I'm just, uh, and, if I, if my, are you, and I have to have a ride now. You all know that. So it's like, Tammy, do you, do you, uh, you want to go to the gym? And she's like, Arr. so I said three or four times a week. But when I do it, I feel better. And any, anybody that's been there, or if you're there now, you know that when you do that, you feel better. Physically. Your whole mental state's different. Okay? There's just something about that. It's because your muscles want that. But I spent, that wasn't always like that. I spent about 20 years just working and going home. Working, going home, drinking, going to sleep. Working, going home, drinking, going to sleep. Drinking myself to sleep. Whatever. But I wasn't doing that. And, uh, even after I was obedient to God's calling, I was still didn't realize how big I'd gotten. <laughs> you know, I'd like to say I just woke up one day and realized, but what happened was my little man, he was about say eight, something like that. And he put his hand on my shoulder and he said, Daddy, you okay? Daddy, you okay? Daddy, you okay? My face was red and I had sweat coming down my forehead. I was out of breath. And I was tying my shoe. Been there? I was tying my shoe. And I realized I couldn't keep going on like that. Amen? And so, I start, you know, I started going to the gym and working out and I've lost 25 pounds. Amen? Now, why do I offer this testimony? It's because this morning we're going to talk about bodybuilding. And building up the body of Christ. And how there's such a parallel that I didn't see until God provided this message. But it's about building up the body of Christ, which is the Christian community. Not just, not just H2HBC, but the whole Christian community. Those that are blood-bought, that, that are, are like-minded Christians, okay? It's about growing into mature Christians. Growing into a point that Ephesians puts it this way. All of us come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God to maturity to the measure of the full stature of Christ. And none of us are there yet. You know? And it's because the more, the more you, you do this, the more you want, the more you just want, you can't get enough of Jesus. Amen. You can't get close enough to God. There's, you're just like, man, i got to go to another level. Amen? Now, it'd be like, I mean, you just, you just, you just got to experience this to know what I'm talking about. We don't want to be like children anymore. Amen? We want to speak out of love. To say that we are the body of Christ is to say that we embody Christ's presence in this dark and perverse world that we're in. Are you doing that? Ouch. Ephesians urges us to live worthy of our calling with all humility, with all gentleness, with patience, it says. It takes time. Bearing with one another in love. Making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. The whole body. 
doing the separate parts, the whole body grows. Amen? You, I saw a, a, a cartoon of this guy. He does upper body work all the time. And from the waist up, he's just a big monster. He's got toothpick legs, you know? You, it don't work, amen? This guy could bench press a Volkswagen, but he couldn't stay with Ethan on the trail. You know, it just wouldn't happen. So we got to, the whole body has to work together. To live out our calling, Ephesians tells us Christ has given each of us gifts and that some would be apostles and some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers to what? Equip the saints for the work of the ministry. For building up the body of Christ. We build each other up as we work and do what God's called us to do. Each of us has God-given gifts. Everybody in here does. I may be the pastor. Dustin may be the associate pastor. We've got a couple assistant pastors. Those are, But we're all ministers. Everybody in here, if you've given your life to the Lord, you became a minister right away. You didn't have to take no class. It just happened. You just joined. You got, boom, you're in God's army. Amen. So you're a private one. Your job is yeah. spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. So how do we go about using our gifts to build up the body of Christ? So, so often we get wrapped around what it is specifically that God's called us to do, I already told you, the, the main thing is to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. To let your light shine. To be the salt of the earth. Amen? To just permeate everything that's around you. But we get caught up in, you know, we do the, the, the gifts questionnaire and we look to see where, and there's nothing wrong with all it because it's an excellent tool to help us. But the truth is, these three things you're going to learn today, if you do them, everything else falls into place. Yes, I promise you. And it's a lot like bodybuilding in the physical sense. See, the first thing is it takes regular exercise. I didn't run three miles the first time I went to the park, folks. Now, I remembered when I did, so I thought I'd just run three miles slower. That ain't happening. The lungs get on fire before you get a quarter of a mile, and you're like, what happened to this body? And this little voice says, you didn't take care of it. Regular exercise exercise amen when it comes to physical exercise we have all kinds of options too some of us i said running i heard <laughs> you don't have to run you can walk in fact walking is one of the best things you can do and if that's too much go down to the swimming pool and walk in the pool that's even better amen for the joints but there's so many things biking swimming walking rowing biking meant bicycle guys okay paul don't get on your bike today and when you leave go i'm exercising okay that's not how it works Weightlifting, tennis, golf, disc golf, softball, volleyball, soccer, baseball, basketball, you name it, whatever. If you're having fun doing it, do that because it helps exercise all the muscles. Swimming is excellent. Amen? But you have to be what? Regular at it. Can't go to the gym, lift a few weights. First off, you're going to feel like you got hit by a train the next day or two and not go back for two or three months. It doesn't work that way. Well... In the spiritual sense, it's the same way. Muscles become larger, more capable from exercise, whereas those parts that are not physically exercised undergo atrophy. If you know anybody that's laid up, okay, and if you ain't met my mom, I'll go take you. <laughs> muscles just, they just dwindle away. They dwindle away. Spiritual strengths become increased through use while those hidden may dwindle. Somebody did not want to hear that this morning but needed to. There's something that you should be doing but you're not. That is going to go away. It's going to dwindle away. If you're supposed to be doing something and you have an unction in the Spirit to do it, but you don't do it, that's the regular exercise. away. Your spiritual muscles will go away. Somebody need to hear that. Okay? God has showed you what it is. Spiritual exercise increases spiritual capacity, just like lifting weights. I did not start out with a pair of 55s when I was playing on the bench. I started out with 30, and I thought it was going to kill me. Okay? But as you add that, I, I, don't, I don't put a limit on that. I let God put a limit. If I go up to 60s, that great. Amen? But if you don't push the capacity, if you don't do what you're supposed to, spiritual exercise increases spiritual capacity. Forget it. You're not going to get somebody. A lot of people need to hear that this morning. Regular exercise. Spiritual exercise increases that capacity, just like regular exercise increases the muscles. Amen? Amen. What kind of spiritual exercises? Just some examples. Singing. You can't sing a gospel song without being touched. Amen. Amen. Praying. 
just talking to God Amen. is so powerful and it's a regular exercise we all should do. See, there's so many... Meditating on God's Word, opening the Word and reading a scripture to it, maybe just two verses and spend the next hour just soaking in what God wanted to tell you through that. That's meditating on God's Word. Contemplating God's creation. Man, the stars cry out every night that there's a God. Amen. We... We go hiking a lot. We get to a spot and I just look out. And it's like, wow, I got onto the little tower down there at Mother Neff. It's 30 minutes away. You go up to the top of the tower and I was just filming and I couldn't help myself but say, look at what God has presented us today. Look at this canvas. It's different every day. Contemplating God's creation. Listening for God in silence. That just means we need to shut up and listen once in a while. That's a spiritual exercise. Tithing. <laughs> that's a spiritual exercise practicing forgiveness spiritual exercise offering hospitality well God put it on your heart to do something you're like I ain't doing that what happens atrophy those spiritual muscles will go away and it goes on and on God probably showed you something these were just a few things just as physical exercise can be done by yourself or with a lot of people Spiritual exercise is the same. You do a lot of these things by yourself, but today you're in corporate worship. We are in corporate worship for 30 minutes, and this is still part of you being edified because if you came expecting, God's touching you. Amen? The second thing is rest. The physical body requires rest. You've got to rest in between the workouts because the muscles get broke down while working out. <laughs> and I think it says it get fed in the kitchen. Okay, and they get built up while you're sleeping in bed. Rest. You must rest. The body needs time. And you can, anybody that's ever worked out before knows, you, there's got to be breaks in between, not just overnight, to let those muscles grow back up. <sighs> rest is a part of spiritual growth too. We call it Sabbath keeping. It's so easy to miss this. Because our world is so full of other stuff to do. And I've heard this before. And I've said this myself before. Prior to being stuck preaching y'all. <laughs> Amen. I'm stuck. <laughs> but see. I would make the excuse. Hey. This Sunday's the only Sunday for me to sleep in. Sunday's the only Sunday for me to do this. Sunday's, on, Sunday's the only day that I can fill in the blank. Amen. Give me, somebody tell me, have you ever, amen? I mean, su Sunday's the only day, for, and it's going to be a beautiful day. You want me to go to church, honey? I'm going fishing. I'm going hunting. Oh, football. And then even when I was going to church, I'd tell, hey, afternoon, forget it. I'm watching football and drinking beer. I ain't going to go back to church this evening with alcohol in my breath. <laughs> amen. There's always something. Rest is a part of spiritual growth as well, though. You've got to rest. We call it the Sabbath keeping. It's one, of, it's one of the Ten Commandments. Having a day apart from the rest of the week for rest and renewal. Restoration of the soul. You get that in here. You get that the one on Wednesday. You come in for a Bible study, but you get touched. You get your tank filled back up. I, I know there's a lot of people that make it on empty here on Sundays and get filled back up. It's a whole lot better. And I think the, I think the price is a little bit better too. When you, when you just get a half a tank on Wednesdays, amen. Fill it back up, amen. <laughs> In our fast-paced, achievement-oriented culture, this is not something that's practiced as much as it should be. No rest for the weary. We are um, busy people. Always on the go. We are... Overscheduled, overworked, and overwhelmed. Overwhelmed. John Calvin, the father of Presbyterianism, affirms that, quote, work is good, but when we work all the time, work becomes curse, not a blessing, end of quote. The Trappist monk Thomas Merton said this, quote, to allow oneself to be carried away by a multitude of conflicting concerns, to surrender... To too many demands, somebody needs to hear this, to commit oneself to too many projects and to want to help everyone in everything is to succumb to violence, end of quote. Violence to yourself. We stay so busy for the Lord doing things that we don't have any rest. 
you got to have rest. Amen? We cannot do it all. We do violence to ourselves. Some of us have great difficulty carving out time in our lives for Sabbath rest. <laughs> if you're here today, you're not. Amen? But then again, maybe, maybe you need to hear it because you've thought about that or maybe you have missed a few. Amen? It is something we know we need down deep to replenish our spirits and to restore our souls. Mm -hmm. Mm. I'm doing great since I'm here. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I'm doing great since I'm here. Amen. The third and final thing is bodybuilding nutrition. Do you realize I hate, I despise, I can't stand, is that enough ways to put it? <laughs> Rabbit food. <laughs> <laughs> I love donuts. Amen. But your body will crave the right things when you work out. Amen. Regular exercise and rest. And when you go to eat, I ask, I say, why don't you just get a big, a really nice salad? My wife's like, whoa, what did you do with my husband? <laughs> Amen. We go to the hospital. We're going tomorrow. And uh, we're probably going to end up in, I love their salad. Amen. Got good salad. The hospital has the best salad in the world. I've told my wife before, when we go to Temple, I said, if you want a salad, we just go to the hospital. Hardest part, I mean, just give them a dollar and let them park your car for you. Forget it, you know. But anyway, bodybuilding nutrition. And if you're really doing a lot, you need more nutrition. So there's supplements that you can buy that will give you the protein to help the amino acids that you need to help your muscles grow. Amen? To replenish them because you've torn them down. And that old adage of you are what you eat is true. It really is. When I was 206 pounds, and my little man thought I was dying because I was tying my shoes, I was eating cheeseburgers, deep fried catfish, chicken fried steak. And that was that first day. And then on the next day, <laughs> I mean, that's just the way it was. Amen. Amen. Eating a balanced diet that includes lots of fruits and vegetables, some protein and carbohydrate, only small amounts of the fat and stuff is great for you. And in a spiritual sense... It's the same. Like newborn babies crave pure spiritual milk so that by it you may grow up in your salvation. Amen. Our bodies to this day, even as a mature Christian eating meat, has to wash it down with spiritual milk. We have to. Constantly. Amen. Well, to go ahead. I, I don't know why I keep skipping, but anyway, there it is again. <laughs> First Peter 2.2 2. What are you reading? What, what are you watching? What are you listening to? This is your food. You are what you eat. Spiritual food. What, what, what are you looking at on the computer? <laughs> Allowing ourselves to be constantly bombarded by negative media messages of danger, anxiety, and fear sets us up. It can be soul destroying, honestly. But by taking in positive media messages of hope, love, and peace, we have a different outlook on life. That spiritual food makes us have a different outlook on life. You know, one of the not it's not a common denominator across the board, but one of the most common denominators with young suicides is individuals playing video games and watching TV of nothing but stuff of just, j it's wrong. That's right. It's a common denominator. A lot of it's those role-playing games where you just get reconstituted after you die and there's just no reality. We become desensitized to those things of the world and that one especially by some of the things we watch. If, on the other hand, if we, if we watch PBS documentaries, we get a, we get a, we get a, a deep learning of not just the universe, but where we're at in it. What we are. Reading uh, the Bible. Daily devotionals. Spiritual food that automatically nurtures our spiritual muscles that we're exercising. Amen? And we grow in the Lord. And as we grow individually, the body grows. And we're building that body up. Amen? Amen. So, in closing, to... To, 
to lead lives worthy of our calling as disciples of Christ means getting involved in bodybuilding. Building up the body of Christ. And it's as easy as spiritual exercises that we covered through Sabbath rest and nourishing our souls. In doing so, we will grow into mature Christians to measure of the full stature of Christ as the Word says in Ephesians and thereby promoting building up the entire body of Christ to glorify Him at all times. I pray each and every one of you receive the portion of this message that you were supposed to and I pray that you grab a hold of that and apply it to your lives today. Father God, I thank you right now for another short and powerful message on bodybuilding. Building up the body of Christ. And Lord, for those, just the morsel that you give each and every one of us that we're supposed to apply to our personal lives, give us the divine wisdom and courage to go forth with that. With our regular exercise. With the rest. And with spiritual nourishment. Let us replace the things of the world with the spiritual things we discussed today. We ask all this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And amen. Don't forget we're going across the street to uh, the meadows. Uh, lift